Good afternoon, and hope you're having a great day. So in this week's Torah portion, a portion of Balak, we read about Bilam the prophet, who's hired by Balak to come and to curse the Jewish people, as we spoke earlier this week. And instead of cursing the Jewish people, he ends up blessing the Jewish people. But there's one line that we read there that's very moving, but yet it's painful sometimes when we read it. And Bilam says about the Jewish people, Hein am levadad yishkon, a nation that dwells alone, that dwells alone. Uvagoyim lo yishashov, and isn't either recognized, it doesn't acknowledge the other nations. And it's been our story for eternity as the Jewish people that we've felt alone like a sheep among 70 wolves. And although Bilam in his prophecy means it as a compliment, that it's the courage of the Jewish people that they dwell alone with God and that they knew what to do right against all odds and despite what everyone tells them, it's also the painful reality of the Jewish people who have always felt alone and always felt like they have to fight for themselves without anyone else with them. And never has it felt more painful than since October 7th. To first watch what Hamas did, the devastation, the sheer hate and terror and murder, acting worse than an animal, of course, would ever act. And then, even maybe more painful, was to see the response of the world. Even before Israel went into Gaza to fight, people were celebrating what Hamas did, denying the fact that Hamas raped and killed so many people and blaming it on Israel. How to feel alone and so painful, there are no words. And over the eight, nine months, it's only gotten worse. And it's something that we think about and reckon with every single day as a Jew. Why are we alone? Why is there such a double standard? As Abba Ibn once said, that if a nation brought a resolution to the UN saying that the world is flat and Israel's the one that crushed it and flattened it, then 168 would vote in favor of the resolution, 13 against and 26 abstentions. The world has a double standard and a certain hate for Israel. And it's painful to us as Jews. We're always fighting on the forefront for every minority, for every person who's underprivileged, for every person that's hurt. And then we see the world ignore our plight and treat us different, our blood cheaper than they would treat someone else. But last night, you know, I don't like speaking politics on this podcast. I don't think it's a place for politics. I think it's a place for Torah. But last night I, th I saw something wonderful that really moved me. I don't watch the RNC, the DNC, the Republican National Convention, the Democratic National Convention. But last night, there were two things that happened at the Republican National Convention at prime time, about 10 o'clock. Firstly, Omer Nutra is a hostage, an American hostage who's been in Gaza for over nine months. And his parents were honored to speak at the convention in a prime time slot. I think right before the VP choice, Vance was gonna speak. And it was so moving to hear them get up. And the entire crowd started chanting, bring them home, bring them home. And she spoke so moving. She spoke about her son, Omer, who was born just after 9-11, when they were living in Flushing, Queens, New York, just after the greatest terrorist attack on our soil. Now this American boy who's named Omer, which means the harvest, an Israeli name, is such an amazing, young, talented man who had to celebrate his birthday in captivity. And to see the thousands of people in the crowd cheering her on, she spoke in English, but she read Psalms in Hebrew. And her husband asked everyone to stand with them and to scream, bring, me, bring them home. And the entire place was on their feet, roaring, everybody. It was moving. It was moving to see that beyond the hate, that we hear on campuses beyond the progressives who want to annihilate Israel every single day, the squad. There are people 
that truly stand with Israel and stand with the hostages against terror. And then there was this guy, Sha- Shabbos Kestenbaum. Shabbos Kestenbaum was a kid who went to Harvard. And he came up to speak with his kippah. And he's suing Harvard for not protect- protecting him against anti-Semitism. It's going to be a remarkable case. And hopefully he will win and we could hold Harvard accountable. But to hear the words he said and the way he spoke about Jews and Americans. And to hear the cheers he got when he spoke about standing up for the Jewish people and against anti-Semitism. It was really moving. And ultimately, as alone as we feel we are, there are so many people that love us and care for us and pray for us. And it's important that with knowing the aloneness of the Jewish people, we recognize and we celebrate and we appreciate those that care for us and stand for us. I have a feeling, and I don't know, I'm praying that it's otherwise, that at the DNC they will not be making a prayer for the hostages and chanting, bring them home, which will be sad because so many Democrats and so many of the mainstream, which are the major, majority hijacked by extremes, really stands with Israel. I want to tell you a remarkable story that happened this week in Israel, talking about the unity of the Jewish people. So there was this girl who really wants to get married. And of course, one of the most important things we could do, especially in a time like this, is make sure that Jews marry Jews and have children and are able to reproduce and bring more Jews to the world and build the Jewish people. And this one woman really wanted to find her match, but it wasn't easy. And she decided to do something original. She was going to hire a scribe who was going to write a Torah for the singles, by the singles, for single people praying to find a match, and it was going to be paid for by single people. And they got tons of singles from all over, hundreds and thousands of singles, to contribute towards this Torah that was written in their honor. And then they were finishing the Torah and said, where are we going to give it to? And they said, one second. Now it's during the war. And the truth is that us and the soldiers have something in common. Because we're fighting to get married and to build the Jewish people. And the soldiers are fighting to protect the Jewish people. And we want to protect the future of the Jewish people. So right outside the gates of Jerusalem in Cinema City, there's the Tent of Heroes, which is a place that's open 24-7 for hostage for 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 excuse me for parents or siblings or family of bereaved soldiers who were injured or were killed to come and seek comfort and get a hug and it goes on the whole time and they said why don't we dedicate the torah to this place so they could not just have a tent for heroes but they also have prayers and services three times a day to pray for these families and for those still in gaza fighting for israel and sure enough, there was the dedication. And thousands of people came. And to see the celebration, to see the unity, the love, the embracing one for another, the praying, people who have broken hearts, who lost children, who lost siblings, who lost parents, who were maimed, but yet united together in our fight against terror and for the protection of the Jewish people in Israel. We might feel alone. But we also have to remember that there are many, many who love us and care for us. And no matter where we stand in politics, and we all have the right to be on a certain side and to feel a certain way about American politics, but it behooves us to also be able to recognize people that support and love Israel and thank them for that, even if you might not agree with them, and congratulate them and cherish that which they are doing, which is so needed in a time as dark as today. God bless you and have Shabbat Shalom.